They ended Vrain's early for this? What a ripoff! Hey everyone, Templaw74 here coming to you live with a Yu-Gi-Oh! video for the first time in a long time. And I gotta be honest with you, this discussion about Yu-Gi-Oh! 7, or rather I should say Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s, which was revealed to us last night at Jump Fest, is one of the harder discussions I've done in a while because my initial reaction when I saw Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s here and we got the information was why is it that every anime has filled the compulsory need lately to go from the art style of the late 90s and early 2000s to this bright throw up be yokai watch style animation you know i get it that it's a new generation a new style they're trying to get more people into the anime niche but at the same time i wasn't a fan when pokemon did it and i'm really not a fan that Yu-Gi-Oh is doing it but with that said though there were a couple of things that did intrigue me and there is one particular animation here for the rush duel concept which we'll talk about here in a little bit that did look phenomenal to me and there was a nice surprise there it kind of gave me dark side of dimension vibes when i saw this particular animation but yeah my initial reaction though was really we ended brains almost a year early for this yeah, I was not a big fan of it. I was not really impressed when I watched it because I did take some time during my breaks at work to catch up on the Jump Fest live stream there. And I got to be honest, I was not really amused by it at all. I kind of, after the third time of looking through or the third time of looking away to check it out, I just turned my phone off. I'm like, nope, no longer interested. But, you know, having some time to sink it in right now, I don't know how I feel about it, to be honest with you. After I've given it some thought and I've had some time to let it sink in, I really have no thoughts right now because it's kind of like how it was when Sun and Moon first came out. You know, it there were aspects of it that looked great. There were some aspects that looked horrible and deserved to have been thrown in the trash bin. But at the same time, you know, like I said, I wasn't a big fan of Sun and Moon with Pokemon, but then I watched it, some things stuck out. There were some things that I really liked. So I'm hoping that Yu-Gi-Oh! can kind of, if they're not going to shoot themselves in the foot, I hope. I hope that there are going to be some things that are going to be salvageable from this series. But just by reading the character profile, I got to admit, it's not a series that I am very anxious and ready to jump on board to watch. And really the dream of the big crossover or Duel Monsters reboot that we were possibly going to get for the 20th anniversary pretty much have been killed at this point. But with all of that being said, though, there is some information to discuss about Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s. So without further ado and at risk of further rambling, let's get into it. So Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s, the next generation Yu-Gi-Oh! anime, was what was announced last night. We got introduced to the main characters. We got some information regarding the new format of Rush Dueling. And overall, it was kind of a wash on how I felt about it. Uh, like I said, there's one particular animation here that's on your screen that I actually l fell in love with because my boy Blue Eyes is back. And Blue Eyes kind of reminds me of Dark Side of Dimension Blue Eyes here. So uh, yeah, it's also been confirmed during this whole thing that legendary cards like Blue Eyes White Dragon will reappear in the Rush Duel format. I'm hoping to see a lot more legendary cards than Blue Eyes. Some names I'm really looking forward to seeing here in Rush Duels Blue Eyes, Red Eyes, uh, Stardust, uh, Odd Eyes, uh, Decode Talker, things like that. If they show these legendary cards in the Rush Duel format, I would be okay with it. I'm not going to lie, because the animation for the Rush Duel looks sick. But anyway, other than that, though, and this is where the anime kind of dropped off a cliff for me when we got to the character introduction. So I know I said this about Arc 5 where I was not a fan of the younger protagonist style. The I was not a fan of the style of Arc 5. And it looks like that Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s is going to take more cues from Arc 5. Which is not really surprising if you think about it because Vrains was a dark, mature series. It was arguably one of the darker and more mature series Yu-Gi-Oh! has ever done. So the fact that we're going back to a more kid-friendly adaptation of the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime wasn't really a surprise. Although, like I said, I wasn't a fan of it with Arc 5, and I'm really not a fan of it now. But anyway, we did get introduced to the main batch of characters. I'll get back on subject with this. The first one is our main character, Oedo Yuga. 
and his age is 11, and he's a fifth grader who loves dueling and inventing, who goes to Goha 7 Elementary. He calls his inventions roads. He thinks of duels run by adults currently are overly rigged and super unfun, so he develops his own rule set that he dreams of entertaining the world with, his ace monster is Seven Roads Magician. So, okay, when I read this, the first thing that crossed my mind was a younger Yuya Sakaki. That was literally the first thing that popped into my mind. And you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't even think Zexel had a main character this young. I think this is the youngest Yu-Gi-Oh! protagonist we've ever had at age 11. The youngest, I think, was Yuya and Yuma, and they were both 14. Uh, Yusuku and Yugi were 16. Yusei was 16. So, you know, they usually try to keep in the 14, 16 age range for these protagonists. So the fact that they dropped all the way to age 11 is just kind of mind-boggling to me. But uh, that wasn't the only character we got introduced to. We also got introduced to Luke, uh, and that's his nickname. He's formerly known as Kamijio Tatsushia, and he's 11-year-old as well. He's a classmate in the class next to Yuga's. He's self-proclaimed number one duelist of Goha 7th Elementary. He learned about the rumor of the king of duels, and he investigates as how to become the king. He learns about Yuga. Machines tend to break down around him. His ace monster is Rush Dragon Daggers, or Draggers, Draggers. Ugh. I cannot talk this morning. But uh, yeah, that was introduced as well with Luke. And like I said, it looks like he's going to be kind of... I don't really know what to equate him to because the next character kind of gives me more of the Reggie, Kaiba, Ryokin vibe. So I wouldn't put Luke in that category. I think Luke will probably end up being more like a Joey character than anything. And uh, with that said, though, next character. And this is the kid that I am going to probably equate to a Ryokin, a Reggie, uh, a Kaiba, you name it. This is what I would equate this to. And that is Sogetsu. Kageto, and he's 12 years old, a 6th grader on the student council of 7th elementary, a serious-minded fellow who has no tolerance for tardiness and has never been late to school as is heir apparent in Sogetsu's style of dueling. He is fully sure of his righteousness, and his name also means blue moon combined with student. So yeah, this is the character just looking at these that kind of give me the Kaiba Ryokin vibe here, the more mature um, anti-protagonist, I guess would be the word for it. Uh, not really a whole lot more that I feel about him other than I feel that he will probably end up being this generation's Kaiba, Reggie, Ryokin, whatever. Next character we got introduced to is the new female, uh, the ranks of Yuzu, Aoi, Teya, etc. that this character is going to be joining, and her name is Kirishima Roman. She's 11 years old. She's Yuga's classmate along with top class grades and being super good at sports. She's the lead guitarist at the elementary school band, Roar Roman. While she doesn't really like duels, she's a girl who's wrapped in mystery who often crosses paths with Yuga and his buddies. And her surname means Island of Mist relating to her natural beauty as the likely mysterious person plot character. So with that said though, this is probably going to end up being the main female of the whole thing. And those were the main characters that we got introduced to from Jump Fest. We also got some looks into Seven Roads Magician, the new protagonist's main monster. Then we got introduced to Rush Dragon Drag, Drag Ears, which is Luke's ace monster. And yeah, that was essentially it on the characters and the illustrations that we got inter introduced to. And then we get into the story. And the story here is really kind of lackluster in my opinion when I read this. The story reads, in the not so distant future of Goha City, it's governed by the largest corporation, Goha Corp, the next Leo Corporation, the new Kaiba Corporation for everybody that's been in the new Yu-Gi-Oh niche for a long time. And everything from schooling to dueling rules to much of daily life is governed by Goha Corp. Odigo Yuga, who attends Goha 7th Elementary, decides to change this world, which is too cramped for kids, and battles with his road rush duel while believing in his creations. We got a visual of Goha 7th Elementary as well, along with more illustrations for the main characters. 
And that was essentially all the information that we got from Jump Fest. Again, Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens will be the seventh iteration of the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime. It will debut in April of 2020. No exact date has been announced. It just says April of 2020 on the trailer. So yeah, we've got a few more months of a Yu-Gi-Oh! drought before Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens begins. And pretty much what I said at the beginning sums up my feelings about Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens. I'm getting Sun and Moon vibes here. I'm not a fan of when Pokemon did this vast change. I am not really a big fan of Yu-Gi-Oh! doing the same thing, although I guess it was only a matter of time before Yu-Gi-Oh! did. Um, I think it's safe to say that Vrains was probably the end of the original Yu-Gi-Oh! era of animation and design. What I mean by that is Vrains is probably the last Yu-Gi-Oh! anime that we're going to see of the late 90s early 2000s art style in the Yu-Gi-Oh! franchise, which is really sad because I really loved that animation and art style, and I'm really sad to see it go if that ends up being the case here. Again, I it seems like every major franchise is doing this, so I figure it was only a matter of time before Yu-Gi-Oh! jumped on this boat as well. When I saw this, to be honest with you, it didn't feel like Yu-Gi-Oh! at all in my opinion, and it gave me Sun and Moon vibes, and I'm really hoping we don't go down that road. Again, it's doing a lot of things that I have said in the past I am not a fan of, but at the same time, I am also an optimistic person. I believe the glass is half full, and uh, I am going to watch Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens, whether I get into it or not, enough to keep you guys all updated on it weekly is going to be a whole different discussion and a whole different debate. But overall, Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens has left a bad taste in my mouth so far. I'm willing to give it a shot to see how it goes because I believe you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. But just what I'm seeing right now, I am really not impressed. And my first words out of my mouth when I saw this, to be honest with you, was what I said at the very beginning of the video. We ended Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains nearly a year early for this. I think we got ripped off because there was so much they could have done with Vrains that they could have extended it easily into April, and the fact that they cut Vrains short almost a year early, in fact, just to give us this, they better hope they go all out in it. That's just what I'm, that's just all I gotta say about it. I hope they go all out, and I hope that Yu Gi Oh! manages to pull off this art style a bit better than its Pokemon counterpart because we all know how that turned out, in my opinion. And I know I'm referring to Pokemon a lot here, but that's just the closest example that I've watched regularly that I can compare this to. And I feel like it's a very good and appropriate comparison here. But overall, those were my thoughts on Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens. Again, going to air in April 2020. Like I said, not impressed, but going to give it a shot to see how it is before I rush to judgment. But as always, in the comments section down below, let me know what your guys' thoughts were about Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens in the trailer from Jump Vest last night. What are your thoughts on these new animation styles? What is your thoughts on going back to the younger protagonist, and in fact going younger than even Yuma and Yuya, but still keeping that entertainment vibe, I guess you could call it? What are your thoughts on all this as well? Just let me know what your guys' thoughts are in general about Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens in the comment section down below, because as always, I enjoy hearing from you. All right, everyone, as always, Templar74 signing off. Have a great day, everybody, and I'll talk to you all next time. Goodbye, everybody.